เราอีเฟกติฟไม่งั้นก็ลองเพิ่มนะสวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีครับ How are you um I am okay just going um going back from taking a short trip with my sister s Okay, where did you go with your sisters? Uh, cafe around here. Ah, great. What did you buy at the cafe? Coffee, tea, and cake. Bread as well. We ate a lot. Ah, okay, just a moment here. Okay, why isn't? Just a minute. Fresh. I just need to adjust one property of this window here. There we go. Okay. That's better. All right. And voila. There we go. All right. So we got a little. A little bit of review from yesterday, and that is right here. Now right, let's go. Where did it go? All right, so let's just do a quick review. We did quite a bit yesterday for terms and reading. And so uh, we did the term deputy for, or in deputize. So you're kind of, so you can find, you can deputize one of the foreign teachers to, to do the job so that you need them to do. If they are trustworthy, mm. and if they are a good leader, and if they have good awareness and consciousness, those other terms that we learned yesterday as well. <clears throat> okay, we learned the term delayed gratification. And waiting for you know something. The better things later. Yes, doing your work now, rewarding yourself later, and you'll be better. You'll be better at studying. Uh, the term cohesive. Do you remember what that means? Cohesive. Um, joining, collaborating. Conceptually, like conceptually, yeah. That those are elements of cohesiveness. When, mm. when you have like, Connect. yeah, when you have, mm. that's good. When you have a cohesive team or a co cohesive department, they communicate well, they are, they are close together, right? Mm. So we you can use the term abstractly when you're talking about having a good team or a good, good, good uh, group, but you can also use it very practical, with a very practical uses. Glue is, uh, is cohesive. It, bind, it binds things together. So mm -hmm. it is an adhesive, if we're talking about it another way, as a noun. Okay, so cohesive. You and your family are very cohesive. Cohesive. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Collaboration. Uh, yes, like we talked about that at length for a while. And we talked about leprechauns as an idiom for a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. All right, so let's look here. All right, manage new networks. We, excuse me, I'm just going to find some of the terms that I 
did not write down in there for you. Uh, hopefully we can get to some of them. Come on. Oh, it doesn't look like it saved a whole lot of it. Any more pages? All right, so we ended up on page 16. That's a good place. Well, we'll go back. We'll get a chance to review it again. So let me load that up there. Are you looking forward to work this week? Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you sure? But <laughs> I have to, like, um, waiting for someone to announce the things that we have to do mm -hmm. officially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I understand. It's always a waiting game because even if you mm. are motivated to to lead or to be proactive, sometimes you can use a lot of energy on something and only to have the director come down and squash it with some mm. policy that you were not expecting at all. So yeah. and and it's the last week that we have to find a new teacher again. <laughs> I I would like to have you as the teacher here, yeah. but yeah. Okay, well, maybe maybe I'll call my agency and they can take care of it for you. So, <laughs> um, no. Okay, well, uh, all right. So let's continue down down the line. Actually, let's just. See if we can review a quick couple of terms here. Do that. Do that. No, why? No, we were well beyond sixteen. I don't know why. Maybe I I stopped on page sixteen. Okay. So self management, professional development, and personal development. What, what page is this? Are we still in the Roman numerals? No. Okay. Mm. Yeah, we haven't talked about this one. Okay, so let's go ahead. Um, I did a lot of reading yesterday. Why don't you take a shot at the reading? We'll just start right here, and then I can give you give us a chance to work on any pronunciation. I don't think there will be a whole lot of issues, but go ahead. The whole paragraph, right? Yeah. There are stages that many people go through when starting a new job. The initial experience assignment is accompanied by remembering what you are missing from the last last job in particular the security in coming to terms with the scope of new job be trying out new ways of working as you gain confidence in your performance and grow into the job on entry into a new role or a new environment you will need to recognize the need to understand and manage new networks and relationships. In teaching, it is common to explore the, the interview process with those who are appointed to understand what were the strengths that resulted in their being offered the job and areas where they may have been concerns if these can be accessed 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 yes very good very good okay so this is we definitely read that already um from yesterday but it's okay in the new post it will be essential to explore the new context in depth your strategic planning so this is kind of you know for you this is kind of in the interview process when you're when you're getting a new teacher and you decide you like them and you offer them the job it, mm -hmm. you're gonna have to identify their strengths like what do you like about them and how are they gonna f how are they gonna fit in that role and how are you going to leverage their strength to achieve that shared vision that we talked about yesterday so let's continue 
Your strategic planning of the entry process will be crucial. Yes, we read this yesterday. You should signal your broad agenda early to, to avoid early, but avoid promises and commitments until you are certain. These are appropriate. The very first, oh, excuse me, the first three or four key questions to which you seek answers will convey your values. All right, so this will probably have. The, I have a tendency when I teach to, to, from books to ask questions that they're going to ask later on. <laughs> so, but that's okay. We, we'll just skip over those. So, all right. Let's let let me ask you. Let me. We didn't do this yesterday, but let's try to go through this. What are some questions that you ask the teachers when you interview them that convey your values about? teaching and your role as an instructor? Mm. Actually, the common question that I ask the teacher is that, uh, what what would you do if the class, um, in the class there are mixed abilities of the students study, studying um, your subject together? Mm -hmm. How could you manage the class like that? Mm -hmm. And what what is what is the response you're hoping to hear from from them? How would you like? What is the ideal answer to that question? Because that's pretty. That's a very broad. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get a lot of answers. Yeah. From that. For the ideal answer, I don't have that. But when when I when um the the, the preferable answer for me is that um the teacher have have to provide the practices or activities that everyone can join. Mm -hmm. So, but it depends on the teacher how they gonna manage their class mm -hmm. like that. So I just kind of listen and and um, evaluate from from the teacher's answer, mm -hmm. from from the applicant answer mm -hmm. actually. Also, the things that they can do for the school, like um, can you provide some time practice pra practicing the student to to do the uh, to attend the open competition outside mm -hmm. the school, mm -hmm. which the teacher has to sacrifice some time for for the stu uh, for the student, mm -hmm. right? So we need. Um, the teacher who take, taking good care of the student and train them to be the better, the better ones. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now imagine I'm the interviewer and I ask you these questions. What, what do you, because this is a matter of perception and you as a leader are going to have to manage how people perceive you as best as you can. So if I asked you the question, how would you manage a class of students that have mixed ability levels with English? What what does that question make you think I value? If I am have to answer. Yeah, but that's that's gonna leave you don't not about don't worry about answering the question. Mm -hmm. Think about uh, I'm the interviewer, you're the applicant. And so that question has now left an impression upon you. Like what do I, about what I value in a teacher? What do you think I value in, 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 the, in the teaching staff by asking that question? Mm. If this question that I, if I have to answer this question, mm -hmm. I, I will just thinking about the class in general first, which um, my class as well, there are mixed abilities in the class. Mm -hmm. So I, I will have all the students study the, the, the concept together first, have them think and analyze the structures maybe if i teach the grammar and then 
and then have have them do the group work and checking their understanding later mm -hmm. but this is um not the ideal answer as well but it's the things that i have done in my class mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well but but it leaves so what i what i'm asking though is right now take for example think of it like a like a date like you're dating somebody a boyfriend right mm -hmm. you have a relationship with your boyfriend i have a relationship with my girlfriend but when you first meet each other, you have a back and forth, a Q&A session to get mm. to know each other. So, and that's kind of the same, along the same lines professionally with an interview process, right? So before you decide that you're going to get romantically involved with a new boyfriend, <laughs> you ask mm. these questions and you go, oh, you think maybe it's a good, he answered the question right, or, or you ask, uh, he asks you a, a question that sounds strange to you, right? Mm -hmm. That's maybe not appropriate, or maybe, or maybe. Uh, I don't want to talk about appropriateness. That's kind of going off track. Uh, but the questions he asks gives you an idea about what what he thinks, how he grew up, right? Personal traits that as well. Right. It, okay. You can check. So you can just yeah you can you can kind of get a feeling for somebody's personal traits not just by the answers that they provide but by the questions mm. that they ask right mm. so for example if I if I and think of it like this all right now uh, let's switch roles again I'm gonna be the applicant and I'm gonna ask you the question okay. All right, and the question is. You are the applicant. Yes, right? and but now it's my turn to ask questions. So I'm, I, I want to know your impression, what you think about me, based on just the question. And the question is, how many students are in one class? The impression on you, right? Mm -hmm. So. You only can. I'm not gonna. You, you don't have to give me an answer. <laughs> you only have to think about the question. Like w this guy asked me the question, "How many students are in one class?" So, what does that make you th think about me because of that question? I think that you would like to know um, the class size so that you can think of the activities that you can be done with the student. So, I think that. Um, at if I hire you as a teacher, you will check um, the class size and maybe the other things that will be benefit for thinking about the lesson plan and activities that you're gonna do with, with your student. Mm -hmm. mm. That's a very positive outlook. So, what <laughs> uh, do you think about, about it negatively? Well, I think it's important to think about it in a couple of different ways, and then you can just decide which follow-up questions you need mm. to ask based on the positive aspects that you've mm. perceived and the possible negative aspects that you perceive. So, for example, if, if uh, and you have to be watching them, see their body language, how they react, mm. or, and kind of guess about the other questions asked. So, mm. for example, I... On the positive side, I would I would I would think okay, he possibly cares about teaching and quality education because a big mm. class is hard to teach, right? Um, um, maybe in the middle, I would think he's worried about the size of the class. Maybe he's not confident as a teacher or experienced in, in, for example, Thailand to deal with a big class. You have a large size class, right? What's that? Yeah, yeah, to have a large class size. And then number three, more negatively, maybe he is inexperienced or maybe he is not inexperienced, maybe he's experienced, but he's just lazy and doesn't know how or doesn't have the skills. And he might be 
or he, he's also very inexperienced. Maybe he doesn't have the games or activities for the students, and he, that's going to be a teacher that I'm going to have to got, use a lot more guidance and mentorship with, right? So, you, you know, I think it, I think you have to kind of cover your bases and think about the good, the bad, and the ugly. So you can, and then you can ask follow-up questions like, okay, yeah, 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 oh, in our classes we have, uh, we have 30 students in some classes, other classes are a bit bigger with 45 to 50 students. Uh, and then you can ask about their previous experience. What were the size of the classes at your last school? You know, do you feel comfort? What size class do you feel comfortable with? Kind of innocuous questions that aren't allowed. Give them a chance. Not they're not accusing them of, of any of the negative traits that might be associated with that. So. Um, so when you ask a, so when you ask now when you ask the question going back to um, your question your original question which was the 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 the, 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 the mixed ability, mixed ability class. classes right so mm -hmm. again you could look at it from in a very positive way that you did like oh he's going to think about the he's going to think about the activities that he can do with the class yeah. or like I said before kind of the middle maybe he's inexperienced with mixed ability classes and he's gonna need some guidance because you know some people get slotted they get slotted in or, or very linear in their thinking especially with teaching like you know this is a remedial class they're very mm -hmm. beginning I know what to do with a group like that I know what to do with an intermediate group. I know what to do with an advanced group, and that's how that's how their mind works, you know. So, uh, and they how they approach teaching. So when, so if you ask them about mixed abilities, and they you know depending on their answer and how they react, um, you know, so you might want to you might want to consider consider that, and that perception. Right. For me, if you were to ask me that question, I might think immediately like, oh, this school is not organized or they have mm -hmm. high expectations and low results and, or something like that yeah, as somebody that works that work you know, on the other side of it. Cause, and that's what I mean by managing their perception of you by the questions that you ask. So you may need to listen for their answer also and come up with a follow-up after they've given you the answer and say, well, we have mixed ability classes and that's just the way it is. Um, so we like to try to do, provide a lot of extra activities and we don't worry too much about it because there are students who they've already chosen their career path where English is going to be very useful for them. So the rest is, you know, they'll they'll come seek out the extra attention that they need. Mm -hmm. You know, something like that, you know, put them at ease. And at least then it's like, if there's any doubt in the applicant's mind, you've kind of eased any worries they've had, I, mm -hmm. I would hope. So, you know. Yeah, but during the interview, um, I cannot check the how how lazy a teacher is actually well that, he will know um that later when he worked like for for a while no of course and a month or two months and people later. yeah people wear different masks during an interview process yeah. it's like getting a new girlfriend during or, the interview and demo everything is like oh very good yeah but then after that not at all mm -hmm. yeah yeah so that's always, you know, something, but it can at least kind of give you an idea, you know, mm -hmm. and that about that person. And with you, and what I'm getting at is because I thought I was given this some thought yesterday is how to keep the retention for of these teachers, you know, because you say me you know, stay for maybe one term or two terms and then they bug out. So, um, and then you can kind of get an idea, do a better assessment of what they, what motivates them, and mm -hmm. you know, you know, maybe you can, right? If you if you, you're not gonna be able to tell, 
like you said, mm. during, from the interview process. They may seem kind of lazy, but it turns out they're just mellow and slow and they, they'll do all the work and they mm. just want to, you know. Um, so, but if you get a hint of their personality as well, you can judge what they're doing. Uh, you know what to keep an eye out, eye, eye out for, and then you know, kind of stay on them and, and guide them and mold them uh, mm -hmm. mold your organization, which is, you know, as, as part of the leadership team, it's, you kind of, everybody wants them to come together and be a cohesive unit just right out of the gate. But, you know, getting that to happen, sometimes you need to nudge people in the right direction because they're babies. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, uh, any questions? So just some, I uh, just throwing some ideas out there for you, and then and about managing perceptions as well. Not because you are, you are the face of the department and of the school too. So it can be useful for you in the future. Um, <laughs> if there are problems, try out new behaviors and approaches. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, so we did this. Uh, professional development and personal development. All right, let's go ahead and read here. Very long. <laughs> Very long. It's one paragraph. To <laughs> In recognizing the, um, the competencies that have been managed, it is important to distinguish between professional development, that is occupational role development, staff development which is about development in the particular school context and personal development which is the um, development of the whole person orders 1998 do i have to say that no <laughs> waters make similar distinction oh yeah okay distinctions arguing that the chain of self by self has to be recognized as the only basis for profile change this is development this is the focus this is I, about. I, okay this is about changes in self-awareness which had not been a major focus of teacher development the focus has been on learning new technical skills how to implement implement the new numeracy hour how to teach the new DCSE syllabus without underestimating the importance of these, the process of getting into closer contact with your inner intelligence, your higher self, and your personal capabilities. Cap has not capabilities. Cap 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 capability mm -hmm. has not been the focus of professional learning. These has been some focus on the interpersonal listening, assertiveness work As with assertiveness. As assertiveness, assertiveness work with fellow professionals. What is being suggested here is a central focus on the concepts of self-image, how we see ourselves, self-esteem, the value we place on ourselves and self-efficacy, our beliefs about being able to bring about successful results. Okay. Self-efficacy. Self-efficacy, yes. I love this word. Yes. Why do you love this word? Um, last year, I met with my thesis advisor uh -huh. and she, she had me read um, the article about self-efficacy. Mm -hmm. It is like a belief of of oneself that we can do something mm -hmm. even though we cannot perform that well but if we we believe in ourselves one day we can achieve that that goal right. things like that right. it's the psychology theory that's right mm. i think for myself i know it's not like a clinical term but when mm. it's like I think what they call it, they also call it like cognitive behavioral 
therapy where you mm -hmm. tell yourself you can do something or I call it uh, psychic tools like having something within your mind you says all right I'm not that good but if I just work and try to improve and do something it will become more have more self-efficacy um, all right very good see we're reading we're working on some pronunciation there I got some new words capabilities there. All right, so, all right, these are what make the long-term difference. School performance and pupil performance will improve when we concentrate on these central professional learning processes. Now, that's interesting. Let's go back to that story you told me yesterday. We just read that chapter or that paragraph there. Now, you said, you said yourself that the department head has a method of getting people to do their work. So um, getting staff to do their work before they were kind of lazy. So, um, but she demonstrates, at least to me from your story, she demonstrates high self-awareness, uh, high consciousness, um, because of the way you, at least you expressed it to me. So the self-awareness is she needs people to perceive her in a different way. She doesn't want to look like uh, a whip cracker that nobody can talk to. Uh, she doesn't want to seem, seem uh, what we call like a micromanager, like getting into everybody's business all the time. But she also has to get the work done. She has, she has goals she needs to accomplish. So one of the ways she does that is she creates a level of conformity without alienating other staff members. She just mm -hmm. says, okay, uh, now I'm still waiting for your, sub your grade submissions. Uh, you know, uh, Tom, Dick, and Harry, you guys have all turned yours in. Well done, well done. Uh, and then Jerry, I still need yours too. Please get them to me today. She doesn't, she doesn't alienate. She lets the group take care of that. And that way she's still perceived as a, as a good manager and she's not hurting anybody specifically, but she's in a way she's almost informing the whole team, like why we're going to be behind or why we're not going to be able to move to the next step is because the group has not completed the task, even though she's in a very passive way sort of singled out these people but everybody will know okay and they won't get mad at her so that shows the good self-awareness about how she needs to do the job and then the consciousness at the same time is the fact that she's doing it as a group activity everybody gets to know what's going on everybody's informed at the same level so everybody has ec the same amount of equity in this and then it, the people, and then you as a group can kind of be, you know, look at Tom, Dick, and Harry that haven't done their work, and been like, look, you're not you're not taking the same same share as the rest of us, you know, you've or you're taking more by being lazy and not doing your work, so it's not fair. Um, so yeah, and that's that shows good good consciousness about group dynamics, about getting people to do stuff. Um, and it's a more like what we've been reading about is kind of a more holistic approach and the psychology of it all, as you've stated before, to organization and all that. Organizational psychology, I think they actually teach a course on that too. So, all right, consider one example of each professional development, staff development, and personal development that you have been involved in recently. Okay, I can name these for you so we can go move ahead quickly. An example of professional development is your Google Class and high tech stuff, uh, and conferences that you've been to. Staff development, well, now you could probably say the same thing for that. Um, seminar? Seminar, yes. A lot of times you have to wait for it to be handed down from the director. So, mm -hmm. and then personal development. Well, you reached out to me and you wanted somebody to, to help you with, with this topic, uh, learning some more communication skills. Mm -hmm. So you've, you've absolutely done that, all of that recently.
All right, let's continue here. Since you don't like reading, I'll read this one as well. Okay. <laughs> It is. No, it's okay, and does complain somehow. <laughs> you're like a you're like a student again. It's oh, uh, like, right? A little bit, a little bit. So, mm. all right, go ahead then if you if you want to do it. From where? The star. It's changing position. It. The star. Yeah. I have to. Okay. It is recommended that you keep a personal journal and develop. A professional portfolio. This might provide an opportunity for developing skills in online recording and presentation. The personal journal is based on the reflective, reflective practitioner model for, of professional development, which allows you to explore your feelings, your thoughts, and ideas, and your action tendencies. But linked to research and theory. The professional portfolio encapsulates the most significant elements of that journey in a way representing who you are personally and professionally. Essentially, it is an elaborated and sophisticated CV. It can be anticipated that the professional portfolio will provide the most appropriate evidence you can present when you are seeking to further your development or a new appointment. Okay, that's pretty self-explanatory. We can talk about that briefly, I suppose. Uh, yeah, so I don't keep a personal journal. Maybe I should be doing that. I think it's a good idea uh, because sometimes people have a tendency to not give themselves credit for their accomplishments. Um, the opposite of that is taking too much credit for jobs well done. But, you know, so if you're doing something well or you're making progress, it's good to have a record of that. So if you're ever feeling if you're ever feeling blue or low about where you're at, you can just take a look back there. Now, as far as the portfolio is concerned, I don't have a portfolio either. Oh, man. Actually, the closest thing I have to a portfolio is I... You don't have that? Really? I have a CV. That, you know, I, The only thing I have, really, I still, still have it, is I've got some of the comic books that the students made me for their assignment. And like some of it was really amazing work that they did, uh, and to this day I still have the bottle of water that my acting team went to the English comp. They got fourth place, so I was very proud of that. That I trained them to go from zero to fourth place uh, in the acting English acting competition, and so. We didn't get a trophy, but I got a bottle of water, and I still have that bottle of water because that's very, very English acting. There was a competition. Is it the skit? Yeah, it was, it was the skit. Right? Yeah, the skit competition. So I came on the weekends, and then and then uh, I trained them over the course of like three or four weekends, and I got them up to speed, and then they were what we call like the Cinderella team. They weren't expecting uh, the judges and none of the other schools were expecting, you know, our little group from Bowdoin to perform as well as they did and they got they got fourth place. So I was very pleased about that. That's my portfolio. What about you? I I have that when I I I will be evaluated by the director and deputy directors. Mm -hmm. I, we have to do the portfolio for that. So what? Every, every, every semester. Hmm. Like um, keeping the record of the activities that we have done for the whole semester. Mm -hmm. Academic part, um, extracurricular activities, and other things with the picture. Sometimes I feel like um, 
why do we have to take the photo all the time? Like if I am the one who who work on that project or activity, I will have no time to take the photos of myself doing that kind of thing or asking someone to take the photo of me. I think it's funny, but when I have to do the portfolio, I just um, having a little headache because I can't find the pictures of myself doing <laughs> the activity. <laughs> I, I can relate. I can relate with that. I can relate with that. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's that's good. So it's nice though. Mm. I should work on my portfolio, I suppose, and get some more things done into it. Um, all right, so let's here we go. Um, that reminded me, that also reminded me of another thing, going back to what we we're talking about managing your perception. The other question you ask is, will you give up time for uh, activities for the students? And so um, the perception, the positive perception that I as an applicant would, would think is that okay this school is this school is uh, they want committed teachers they care about teachers that care about the students so mm -hmm. now as a foreigner as I've complained to you before told you some of the things that we have to face especially when working for an agency or not uh, being direct hires in the school I might think oh on a little more negative side uh, they're not very aware. They don't have a high level of consciousness about what um, what the foreign or not the government officer teacher, uh, the non-governmental officer teacher uh, has up against them. You know, they're asking too much for too much time for not enough benefit. They're not aware. You know, so um, but that's not that is. A small consideration so nothing to consider there too much um, anyway let's go on chartered institute excuse me chartered institute, Charter institute? of Charter. per, chartered chartered institute of personal and personnel and development depending on your career aspirations and your focus on people development, you may wish to consider membership of an organization such as the Chartered Institute of Personnel Development, which provides its members with a continuing professional development record and development plan. Their essential CPD principles are. I'll stop right there. Do you have? This is not a Thai institution. I don't know if it is an international institution. Do you have an equivalent here in Thailand for professional development? Mm -hmm. um, yes. Like, if we would like to um, get team promoted mm -hmm. from the government, we have to do kind um, do some kind of portfolio and document that we have to send to the to the to the one school taking care of um, checking the teeth all the teachers mm -hmm. um, portfolio document and stuff and then they have to judge whether we we are qualified to to have a higher salary or being promoted into the next level or not right well that's sort of that's sort of the government uh, thing there but I think this is more of like uh, the charter ugh, my, I need to get one of the magic pens um, this is more like a professional or not a government institution where this is sort of I'm, I could be wrong because I've heard of this, uh, mm. what you're describing before from other teachers who want to become mm. like the master teacher and get a higher salary. Um, 
they have to reach certain benchmarks, like like you said, mm -hmm. the portfolio, uh, ma yeah. managing teachers, uh, measurable success of the teachers they've managed, and everything included in that portfolio. But it has the guidelines and the benchmarks, but there's no real development courses that I'm aware of. Like they say, this is how mm -hmm. this is how you get the teachers to that you manage to perform better or this um, um, so do they do that do they do they give you does the government offer you classes for developing your skills in management mm. no but um, we we have the Sem seminars, maybe I mean workshop mm -hmm. for the teacher mm -hmm. to develop our skills, and it depend on that whether we we will attend or not. Mm -hmm. Can that be workshop? It it, it it could be. Um, let but no one taking care like um, there is no headquarters. Can I say that? Yeah. Who who um responsible for that but we we have like um the the seminar and workshop mm -hmm. um from the government and then send it to the school and and we have to go attend sometime mm -hmm. yeah i don't know how efficient that is so but mm -hmm. um yeah all right but what about what, that, and that's all fine. So we have we have we have something, but is there like a private organization uh, that or an NGO, for example, a non-government organization mm -hmm. that's like, here's some career uh, development workshops, seminars, um, you know, applied science for 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 you to to do, uh, you know, give. Uh, to learn and to practice. If it is like that, I I don't think we we have that. Well, I think that's a new business. Mm. New, this a new business for you to start on the side. You can make <laughs> millions and millions of buy. Um, okay, there's probably something available. Um, We'll have to look into that more, but yeah, I think, I think let's just, let's just read about that. So let's see what they've got here. All right. So here are the principles. Development should be continuous in the sense that the professional should always be actively seeking improved performance. Development should be owned and managed by the individual learner. CPD is a personal matter, and the effective learner knows best what he or she needs to learn. Develop, development should be from the individual's current learning state. Learning objectives should be clear, and wherever possible should serve organizational or client needs as well as individual goals. A regular investment of time in learning should be seen as an essential part of professional life, not as an option. Okay, so these two points here really stood out for me. Um, number, the first one, learning objectives should be clear and wherever possible should serve the organizational or client needs as well as the individual goals. The reason why is because we just discussed the government's uh, institution of how to get personal development and growth or whatever its name is and I said it doesn't sound that efficient to me and this is this illustrates kind of why right because the government I think right not everybody wears the same hat so uh, maybe you've got maybe your school is very strong and they need 
like it says before about the individuals need to take ownership and they know what they need to learn and strengthen. So maybe it's not necessary to have these sort of blanket programs that cover everything like we, we, we need to show. Like if, if you taught for 10 years at a school that's consistently performing at high levels um, of student achievement in math and science, and then say, okay, well, we need to improve our humanities courses with, with Thai and English and Chinese. So those are the seminars we need to take, not seminars in you know, how to effectively teach math or get the students engaged in math. Because we're already doing that. We've got, as an organization, we're, we're strong that way already. So more specific, more efficient. That's my opinion. That's why that one stood out to me. All right, and this last one, regular investment of time in learning should be seen as essential, as an essential part of professional life, not as an option. And the reason that stood out for me is because of the situation in America right now um, with the problems that people are having with the police. And it's a good, this is, this is kind of the standard for everybody is expected uh, to continue their professional uh, development, right? So, um, and it just reminded me of the situation in America. That's all, but that's a good. But if, is anything? Did anything stand out to you, or resonate with you? Oh, come on! <laughs> All right, let's just keep going then. Investment from from my own budget? Well, you're a government worker, so I think you get, I don't know how much they pay you in the salary, but with your benefits and everything else, you know, I still think teachers are underpaid. So I, I, think, I think the government should have some, put aside some, professional development courses. They should have a budget for the teachers for professional development that is discretionary, that allows the teachers to choose. But mm. I don't know how they operate for you. So maybe you have to do it. You're paying out of pocket for this right now. So um, They have um, this kind of program, but um, it takes it take time, like, the whole semester and so the so um the school might not want um some teachers to like going to to be a part of that program and not teaching mm -hmm. so so we now tend to take the program that had shorter course not not for like the whole semester and but but the government will pay for that as well mm -hmm. but not that not that many mm. but it come every year as i as i see mm -hmm. okay well yeah yeah that's called being stuck between a rock and a hard place you want to advance your career there's options available, but then that's then the school wants yeah, you to do so, something else. Mm -hmm. so, all right. Like I, I have to uh, give my, like I have to give my teaching period to the other teacher. That's why, um, the head department might not want someone to like leave leave the school and go to attend the program. Mm -hmm. What what can you do if they don't want that? Can you just tell them too bad? Like I I I think I I I can ask for that, but um we have to think about the uh, teaching load as well. If um if I am missing and another teacher have like twenty to twenty period per week or 25 
it would not be okay. Mm. So if we have more teachers, I might go somewhere. Mm. Right, right. Okay, 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 okay. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. I wonder if you could create a pilot program. Pilot program? Yeah, we see we use a pilot program is a term we use for like an experimental uh, program. Uh, it's experimental. Uh, so we want to see if it works. Like concept, we, if you have a concept and conceptually it sounds good, uh, but it's not tested. So you do run a pilot program. So if it and if you show some success with it, then it gets greenlit and you say, okay, we're going to apply this uh, more broadly. So because it's good, it yields good results. So this way, new ideas, fresh ideas, can be tried. And so I was thinking, hmm, maybe you could have a pilot program. They're already asking teachers for all this extra time. Now with the COVID, we've got an extra day, but the pilot program could be personal and professional development, uh, but for both teachers and students. This way you can justify and you can justify um the extra hours and you can have the students pay a little bit of money extra for the class and help help the teachers get the professional development courses and time that they need you just do like half a day of st of professional development for the teachers on like say a saturday or something like that mm -hmm. so you learn new techniques and strengthen your weaknesses and the students during that first half of the day can learn better study skills, better life skills, habits, critical thinking skills, whatever the students need. And then you spend the second half of the day applying the skills you've learned in a classroom mm -hmm. with, with the teachers and their new skills and students and their, their new skills. Just sorry, I'm getting off off topic. There, <laughs> just gave me. I just had the idea now. So, yeah, easy to to be said than done. Let's say. I I don't know. Um, we can do that. It, or not. You can do anything it you depends. want. Depends. Mm. Just do a pilot. Pro That's why you do the pilot program mm. first. It's easier to get people to commit to trying something new if you're like, yeah, we're just going to do it for four weeks. Four weeks, one school, try it out. Anyway, uh, yeah, so it's interesting because everything we're talking about, too, I've heard some, some of the private schools, the, the private international schools here in Thailand, mm. they... And this is what I've heard, I cannot confirm it, is that at, like, they will not, um, if you've worked at a Thai government school mm -hmm. before applying to the international schools, they will be, they're not as likely to hire you because they have different standards. Uh, and expectations and so basically the way I've, re I've read it into that statement is they don't want teachers who have picked up bad habits from working for the Thai government schools so, mm -hmm. which is unfortunate because I know people like you who work very hard and are smart so but uh, mm -hmm. um, anyway so yeah um, it would be interesting if there is some sort of private development courses that you could, you could take to kind of buffer that. Anyway, so let's go back to here. This changing perception of what it means to be a professional is now becoming central for the teaching profession for all teachers, but also for all other staff. CIPD has only recently attained chartered status 
And in Scotland, there are explorations of the chartered teacher approach. There are no prescribed formulas for the CIP development plan, but it is recommended that there should be clear development objectives, which in turn can be divided into short-term requirements and long-term career and development needs. There should be a clear action plan, exactly what is planned to do to meet the development objectives with suggested headings, including on-the-job opportunities, formal training, and informal self-directed learning. All right, so one of the things we're talking about the chartered teacher and uh, chartered institute of personnel development i think there's something similar here in thailand that we have in america with some very few schools but we call them chartered schools so they still have to meet the government's requirements but the the state or in in thai in in, in the Thai context, the Ministry of Education doesn't have a lot of power over how the school operates. They just say, they tell the they would tell the chartered school, okay, you have to. Here's the performance benchmark. You must meet that. Uh, but we're going to leave you alone. Go do it. And then the curriculum and what the school does and how the school operates is left up to the school. It's a lot more autonomous. It's still a public school. Uh, everybody gets the price, pay the 3,000 baht per term or whatever it is, but it's a public school that functions like a private school might, might do, do their own thing. So I heard of a school like that somewhere in Thailand. Where they yeah. Yes, I can. I cannot um, remember the name, but we have that kind of school. And are they successful with what? Um, yes, but um, the the tuition fee for the student is very expensive. If you compare with the um, other government school, mm -hmm. uh, you have to pay like. Um, like the, it's, it's the same amount that you have to pay for the private school. But for this kind of school that have that has their own special curriculum, um, which they are proof that it will be successful, it is very expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I think in, in the I think in America we don't we don't charge them extra for it, but it might. Um, but there might be barriers to entry, like the students have to live near the school, um, or they have to. They also to get in. Eventually, I think this. They also may have to test into the school. They have to score high enough because the school, if they've got a proven curriculum and proven teachers then they want they want the students uh that are motivated and will, and then can learn because they need to keep they need to keep mm -hmm. they need to keep their marks up as well so um and they need to keep their performance up but the other thing the difference with america with because america's schools are funded a little bit differently um that it also gives an advantage to clever students who maybe they mm -hmm. don't come from rich families they can still attend scholarship you mean? well it's it's not a scholarship though the charter schools are funded the same way public schools are funded in america so it's based off of property tax um so however much however if you live in a if if you live in a neighborhood with uh, lots of expensive homes, then the sc the schools the, the government can collect higher property tax rates, and so the schools, as a consequence, are better than say schools where there's not nice houses and maybe people that don't have as much money. But 
charter so charter and so charter schools a lot of times they'll kind of put them in between districts as well so that the students not just the rich students have access to to them they so no students will ever receive a scholarship if they qualify to get into the school because they make the grades and they live in the neighborhood that's that's the only thing they need to attend to attend the school they don't need to get a scholarship but they will so that uh, and the, financially support it, by the school by by the taxpayers Yes, the tech in that area. In that area, yes, right. So I mean, you take for instance, you know, say this is the Boom Coom district. Uh, let's do it right here. So for example, there's Fashion Island over here, and then here's Boom Coom over here, right? And we'll say this is all uh, Lat Prow, right? I know or. Nuang Chun, whatever. Anyway, so all the houses here, maybe this is a really rich area where Bowdoin is, right? Mm. All right, and then out towards Fashion Island, there's lots of traffic. Maybe there's just lots, lots of tiny apartments, right? Mm. And so the, not a lot of property value out there. Well, anyway, so, and then they could, they might put a chartered school you know right around here right so that way the clever students from here they're all in Boon Koom I think I'm saying that correctly and the rich kids that are clever the contestant can go here also and have it it gives everybody access and it's they all pay taxes these people property owners here pay taxes they all pay their tax rate for the property it does not matter um, so it's sort of it's our method of, of human resource management as a nation. You know, we, it's, our, it's an experiment. So, because you don't know where the next Albert Einstein is going to come from, right? He can come from either one of these places. But if you don't give, if you don't give the people in the poor neighborhoods the opportunity to advance, then you're not using your human resources to its fullest potential. That's the idea, anyway. So, um, so anyway, um, so that's how charter schools work. So we're not going to charge extra in in America for that. There might be now there might be programs like uh, special academic where the student has to buy things for those courses that they have to pay for themselves and there and even there they might be able to get a scholarship or there might be special funding to help them out and you know, from the, the maybe the school operates a program like a bake sale or, so, or something uh, to help finance that so. alrighty 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 let's get on with that um, All right. Oh, next page. That's right. All right. And we've got another question here for you, Miss Mao. What do you have a, excuse me, not what, do you have a personal career development plan? Well, you're kind of in the middle of your career now, mm -hmm. uh, on your career path. So, um, what is your career development plan as of now? For the career development yeah. plan, yeah. I I think I have done a lot in terms of um, professional learning, like attending to the seminar and stuff, and of course, learning with you is one of the develop development right yeah but um but for the development plan for my career i have to try my best to organize all the work that i have done and and do the rec record i think i have done enough but um 
the information of myself is just scattered mm -hmm. all around with the in data itself and the photo itself if i can um um put everything in order i i don't think i have any problem with with this but now i i have to start working collecting the the document and the photos and portfolio mm -hmm. and then and then getting into the evaluation process by the school and and the 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 government office that provide um pro, pro um that they're gonna promote us later mm -hmm. mm. And then the follow-up question here, has your school developed plans for professional portfolios for all staff? Now it is week. They have the plan. They have a seminar talking about this, but still the human resource at the school is not, um, let's say it's not, uh, know that much about the process mm -hmm. there is just some teacher who who study the, the document of how to do this kind of thing but the human resource itself they are weak at this it sounds <laughs> to me like the human resource department needs some career development courses <laughs> i think what in two is better in terms of this yeah i mean the system and stuff i can ask anyone at that room and the staff but here at this school i cannot ask just anyone i i have to go directly to someone who who can answer me mm -hmm. directly but there there are just a few number of of that kind of teacher and staff yeah yeah I think that's some of the weaknesses in the Thai system, whether you're the teacher or the administrative office personnel, they tend to move people around often, so often, or then they retire teachers who are just getting old, but they, they still want to work, right? So uh, you, when, you do, when you do that, you lose a lot of experience you know that can be passed mm -hmm. on and time as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we lose the time as well mm -hmm. and it's like they they want us to do it but there is no guideline mm -hmm. on that yeah i when i my first uh my first job in rochaberry teaching there's a wonderful uh teacher and she spoke English very well. She's so kind. Everybody, the, the staff loved her. The students all loved her. She was always smiling. And she's, a, she's an older woman. Uh, and then the school said, well, we need to make room for the new teachers graduating. So you're next to retire. You got to go. And they, she didn't want to go. And everybody was sad to see her go. So was she old at that time? She wasn't so old, you know. She's, I can't remember 50? her age. Fifty. Over fifty. Yeah. Over fifty. Yeah. So early retirement. I think so. Yeah, they made her do the early retirement, and I thought that is a lot of. It was just a shame. It was a shame. It was a shame. Mm -hmm. that, Losing her. Well, you know, I think if you need to make room for another teacher, then, you know, perhaps you can evaluate your whole staff and say, okay, well, we've got a younger teacher who is low performing, uh, but we know where they are. We know that at this school over here, he can get the attention and they have the staff with the experience to help you know people with his weaknesses improve and just, and just send the younger teacher over there you know and then you still have the benefit uh i you know i don't know how to, i don't know the policies and protocols for how the government manages their human resources but that that to me sounds like you know if it's a viable solution that is easier to keep your experience and 
send somebody who needs improvement somewhere where they can get uh, get mentor get the mentorship that they need. So, and then mm -hmm. a more holistic approach than just simply saying you have you're too old. It's time, it's time to go. So everybody was so sad to see her leave. She was so kind, so kind. The students were crying. They wanted the, her for the teacher for the next year. Or you know, yeah, it, was, it was a sad thing. But uh, anyway, let's go on to accomplished teaching. In this book, you will be encouraged to explore outside the educational context. Here, you are asked to compare threshold standards with an American model based on research. We do need precise definitions of effective or accomplished teaching, and these are emerging. The Hay McBear research on teacher effectiveness uses a very different approach. It is suggested that you evaluate how fully as a teacher you match up to the five propositions of accomplished teaching. These are based on research, which is not the case with the standards in the UK. The five propositions of accomplished teaching are teachers are committed to the students, like you asked for, and they're learning. Teachers know the subjects they teach and how to teach those subjects to the students. Three, teachers are responsible for managing and monitoring student learning. Teachers think systematically about their practice and learn from experience. Number five, teachers are members of learning communities. Okay, so let's, let's, let's process that for a moment here, because that's a lot to chew on. Number one is pretty self, mm -hmm. self is standard. I think we understand, we both understand that. Teachers know yeah. the subjects they teach and how to teach those subjects to students. Well, this one, they have to be expertise at what they have to teach the students. Sure, and we just had a big controversy in Thailand. It was all over the, the internet, the Thai internet of the teacher in... Online learning? Mm -hmm. You mean satellite TV, right? Yes, yes. All right, so, um, yeah, we know... I felt so bad for that teacher, too. Uh, yeah, yeah. I didn't think it was her fault. I thought, actually, I thought of you. I thought of you. I said, you know, the government just does not know how to manage its resources, right? And yes, this teacher did need to improve her expertise and ability, but mm -hmm. the government also could have put a... They have to monitor and check, right? Help her, they assisting her. Sure. Well, they, Before they should have, they should have, they sh yes, they should have done that or never mm -hmm. put her up to begin with. They could have picked you. They could have picked any, any one of the department heads. Uh, they could have picked a John mm -hmm. Pat. They could have picked uh, mm -hmm. a John Renu. Any one of those. They have, those are government employees. They could have picked them. Those are just people that we know. We're not talking about all of Thailand, but they picked her. Mm -hmm. They should have never put her up there. Uh, and but that's just the way it is sometimes. When I got involved in that conversation online, I said, I feel I pity her because mm -hmm. if you know the Thai system, even just a little bit like me, you know that sometimes they just say, this is your job, you're going to do it, and you can't argue with it. So um, anyway, I felt very bad for her. You know, so yes, she needed to improve, but she should not have been put in that position to ever be embarrassed like that. And, yeah. So, um, anyway, so yes, um, so that is that is something teachers need to work on, especially um, here in Thailand as a learning community. Can benefit from that. Uh, see, teachers are responsible for managing and monitoring student learning. What do you think about that in your context, in your reality? 
as a Thai teacher. In reality, right? In your reality. And I say your reality because that just means we're in the mm -hmm. context of Thailand, Tha the Thai hard? education system. Why is it hard? Yeah. Why is that hard? I can manage and monitor as a whole, but I cannot um, have the full, full monitor for every student, I mean individually, for the for the class of like 50 students like in boarding two. Mm -hmm. I cannot remember all the students' names. Mm -hmm. I just can can um, remember their faces that these students are in this class and what what are the level of their English mm -hmm. at that time as a whole. Mm -hmm. And just some who are who who fails, I mean who failed the 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 test we just know that but i cannot tell like um what 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 skills that he need to improve since we have the test based process mm -hmm. rather than skill based checking so we we can just know the overall performance of the student not individual not not the individual one mm. i agree there's i With this, that for me yeah somehow. yeah I think there are a lot of obstacles the ones you mentioned and more to mm -hmm. to accomplishing this uh, proposition here number number three especially yeah. in Thailand so. yeah so the or the teacher normally judge the student by their score that they gain mm -hmm. from the test well see that's why I, I when we were speaking yesterday I also mentioned like the collaboration like between teachers to find out what the students interest like if I, I I could go downstairs and I remember uh, the comic book project I did for, mm. for my students and they all not all of them but so many of them responded so well to that because you know art uh, was one of their strengths and 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 this I know I knew it was something I see them reading the comic books mm. all the time, so I knew it was something that you know piqued their interest, um, and I got results that never had I seen in any of those classes before until I started doing more creative projects for them that suited their interests. So, um, but to monitor, like, and to be to have to have those big classes, like, and find like. All of the all of the things that we deal with as teachers here in Thailand, like it's so it's so difficult to get that data and 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 collate it into something useful. So um, that's something to think about for quite a while. Mm -hmm. I have tried something new, but still I cannot give the detailed feedback for each of them. Yeah. Like. I asked the student to do the dubbing project. Mm -hmm. like they dub the movie, the clip, which is very fun for them and me when I watch um, my students' work. But I cannot um, give every group the the feedback. You know. Yeah. Like I I run out of time doing that. So if I check it um, thoroughly and I think that it is okay, I. I give them the full full max. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, and that's another thing is that when we're managing our time, and suddenly you have like all these assignments come in at once. It's, it's very difficult. So mm -hmm. uh, that sounds like a fun project, actually. <laughs> so fun, very fun. Yeah, because you can. Uh, it reminded me of the show we used to watch. It was a comedy show. Uh, where um, they didn't dub over it. They it was like they called it Mystery Science Theater Three Thousand. So Mystery mm -hmm. Science Theater. Mm -hmm. You can you can watch episodes of it on YouTube now. I'm sure, but uh, basically, uh, this man got stuck on in outer space with two robots, and they were forced to watch bad movies together so and they would just make fun of the movies 
and then sometimes they would insert their own dialogue for the movies and it was a funny joke so you could do a dubbing you could have the students do a dubbing of a movie too where they just make up their own words for for the movie and maybe it com mm. comes out really funny so <laughs> i think it would be so so anyway how do you feel about teachers copying your assignments huh how do you feel about teachers copying your assignments? A little off topic here. Like they have done the same thing as my, as I am, right? Mm -hmm. um, if we we talk before and agree on that, I am okay. If the teacher used the, um, the same assignment, mm -hmm. I am okay with that. Mm -hmm. But if um, there is a case that someone take um, took my work and then and then didn't give me any credit I mean or or without telling me this one is another case mm -hmm. it might leave me the bad feeling mm. yes I I I I I understand you yes because I had the same experience I was wondering I, because we're talking about our work here so uh, and I talk so that teacher took your work mm -hmm. without telling they didn't they didn't ask it, they didn't ask me they didn't tell me mm -hmm. I saw so I was I was torn between being be feeling flattered because I'm like wow my assignment carried that much weight that that another teacher found it so valuable they used it in their own class so that uh, that with that in mind it made me happy uh, but it came as a surprise I don't know if they gave me credit for it and then the thing that got me angry was I was like we teach the same classes <laughs> we both teach the that 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 same cl same class uh, that's like now same student right? same students yes I'm like that's my work like you can't <laughs> do that like now you made more work for me that was my assignment so uh, that made me a little irritated. <laughs> so, anyway, anyway, uh, but but I but I loved that teacher too. So I said, okay, I'm just let it go. Uh, all right. Well, anyway, teachers think systematically about their practice and learn from experience. Hmm. Mm. As a principal, think systematically. About the teacher has to have a plan. Yeah. For something, at least. A system, yeah. Have regular systems. So, mm -hmm. lesson plans. Like, have your lesson plan ready. My my system, systematic approach to lesson plans is, don't think about them too much. Mm. Get a get a pretty clear idea but leave enough room to be flexible and adaptable because sometimes they don't work mm. the way you expect them to and other times yeah. some things some parts of them work so well that they take up the whole class the students get excited mm -hmm. about it, so you can't, can't get it. your lesson plan is concise right I mean English version not not that long is it Mm. For me, it, it you know, it, it's it's not. I don't think I don't think it's very concise, because, um, again, dealing with the mixed level students and things like that, I've learned like you know to set my expectations a little bit lower than like, and because the mixed they're just mixed level, so I know. You know, I'm supposed to teach them how to speak correctly, about how to give directions. For example, I, you know, I know there's a student in the class that it's going to take them one time because they're high level, and then they're going to move on. But I know for the rest of the class, I might have to spend two or three classes doing the same thing to 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 get it over with. Um, or they may, res yeah. So I. You know, or if if we're lucky, then they something something resonates with them, 
and then we can systematically go through the lesson plan and then they've all, they've all got it and keep it simple. Like, how do I get to the bathroom? Go down the hall, turn right, take the second right, you'll see the men's room there, something like that. But um, yeah, it's not, this is, this is a little bit, this whole book here is sort of out of context for us in Thailand, but it's still got very useful things. It's just, I don't, I don't know how, well, you know what, this is coming from an academic to perspective too, not not a practical perspective because this is not what it's like in American schools. So I don't want to give you the wrong impression. Also, the American teachers, UK teachers, they all have the same complaints and issues. Too many students and not ideal conditions. But okay, well let's go here, and we should all learn from our experience every day, every semester is a new experience with new students, new new personalities. And number five, uh, learning communities. Are you part of any learning communities? PLC can be mm -hmm. the things that I use to talk with you. Professional learning community. Well, that's, yes. At, uh, you, thank you. Thank you. I forgot. You, you, <laughs> I... No, but it is, it is not that um, serious, I guess. Like when I sit with other teachers, we somehow discuss on something. I think this is the part of um, learning community as well, but it's, it is not the op official way of learning communities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what? so discussion and debate mm -hmm. among the teachers, I think is the part of learning community for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I, I belong to a couple of different Facebook groups right now, but that's about it for cooking and things like, you know, for professional cooking and things like that. And I just joined one. I've, I joined Facebook for Education. So you might want to look at, look there as well. Uh, but um, like the one who are interested in the same thing, right? Yeah. And you can in find, yeah, I find Facebook groups not to be that great of a, of learning communities. Mm -hmm. I'm also in one called uh, Self-Taught Programmers for Computer Programming Languages. Mm -hmm. They're pretty helpful, but there's some other places that you can get. It's a, Facebook groups aren't that great for, for learning stuff. You can, they're good for finding resources, I think. But like what you're involved with with your school is probably a little bit more more on the money with as far as creating a sort of community where you can do practical applications of the skills uh, and test the theories that you guys are debating um, and have more self-efficacy so um, all right well let's just let's go ahead I want to ask more about this but I don't I don't want to take up too much time either. So we'll just go forward here. Uh, the five propositions of accomplished teaching. Can you read number one? Accomplished teachers are dedicated to making knowledge accessible to all students. They act on the belief that all students can learn. They treat students equitably. Ec Equitably. Equit it, right? Like like the, like you like the word equity. Equitable. Equitable. No. Equitably. Yeah. Equitably recognizing individual differences that distinguish one student from another and taking account of these differences in their practice. They adjust their practice based on observation and knowledge of their students' interests, abilities, skills, knowledge, family circumstances, and peer relationships. They incorporate the prevailing theories of cognition and intelligence in their practice. They are aware of 
the influence of context and culture on behavior. They develop students' cognitive capacity and their respect for learning. Equally important, they foster students' self-esteem, motivation, character, civic responsibility, and their respect for individual, cultural, religious, and racial differences. Mm. Well, that's a lot. To, that's a lot to chew on. Um, but that's not. I. 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 I think I agree with, with uh, that entire statement as far as what a teacher should be doing. What about what about you? The accomplished teacher, right? The accomp. Yeah, I think I think they. They describe many attributes about what an accomplished teacher should be. Mm -hmm. And I think all of those are very pop. Everything they mentioned sounded good and resonated with me. I thought they were on point with nothing. I, I didn't disagree with anything. How, how about you? But here they use um, really big words show me you've got you can yeah, use the so i'm not the, big words. you got to show me the big words meow Raja, like you can circle racial them. differences okay you can pick a color and show me the words and i can and, and that show me hey, you can last show me time intro. i cannot i cannot draw okay any. so what you i don't know why so here what you got to do is go to this blue pen Oh, okay. And then? Yeah. There you go. Okay. Can you see can. my drawing? I can. Okay. I can. Okay. Why last time I cannot do it? I now I just use my finger. I last time I used the the iPad pencil. I don't. And I cannot do it. I don't know why. Maybe you need a new iPad pencil. I'm not sure. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> this is the new one, actually. Okay. All right. So racial differences. We could talk about that. That's a little bit uh that's a little bit more useful in an Amer especially in american context but also the uk as well less so in thailand because thailand is more of a homogenous culture so what is it huh. homogenous you know that word don't you no okay can you tie for me yes i can all right so milk is homogenous it is homogenized Right. If we ah oh, homogeneous, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. But we are using it as a verb, so you'll find that in some English words is when we use it as a verb. Uh, I use this with another one. Let me the, change the pronunciation. Um, di um, different in 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 the meaning, heterogeneous, right? Yes. Homogeneous. Yes. So when it's homo means the same. That's why mm -hmm. if you're list if you listen to native speakers. We might, as an insult, call someone a homo, because mm -hmm. that's, ca that's calling them gay, right? <laughs> it's a pejorative, but but scientifically, homo means the same or to together. Um, so milk is uh, homogeneous uh, because or, or homogeneous because it is all. It's been blended. It's had some stabilizers added to it to keep it all white. If you take milk directly from the cow, put it in a bottle, and put it in your fridge, eventually the cream will float to the top. Then there'll be uh, then there'll be a layer of proteins. Then there'll be a layer of the of the water and the whey at the bottom. And so you, you got to shake it up if you want to drink it and have it taste like milk. So that's all. Um, why were we talking? Uh, so, Thailand is a homogeneous culture, more or less. Not really if you go back into the history. There's a lot of diversity here, but most people consider themselves Thai no matter what. Um, but there's a lot of e people who are eth ethnically Chinese, um, which might be you could probably say is a racial difference then you get to people who are from isan uh who, you know there might be some some genetic differences that are you know are considered a different maybe some people consider them racially different to ethnically chinese 
Um, then you go far east uh, in Thailand. Then you get the very, very dark-skinned Cambodian people, but they're Thai. They live within Thailand. Um, they look differently. Um, you've even got uh, what are, you've got towards Lao. You got the Hmong people. Uh, then you've got towards Myanmar. You've got the Ka the Karen. These are all, I guess, what you would refer to as you know different racial groups within Thailand. Um, and then even here, even in Thailand, that you have uh, you have Thai Thai born in people from India, but they're Thai citizens. Uh, mm -hmm. They grew up here. They've got citizenship, everything else. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in the south of Thailand, even there's some. Uh, Malaysian. Malaysian, right? Yeah, like my wife is from Nakansi Tamarat. She does. Mm. She doesn't look very Chinese at all. She looks more like the Malay. Uh, mm. I think. I, I guess. I'm guessing. <laughs> um, and I. I think even in the south, uh, there were at one point. I read this in a book somewhere. I saw a picture. I don't know if it's true or not, but there's even some people of more African descent that they kind of live in their own communities here in Thailand. I don't know about it. Ah, don't worry about it. But that's but that's what they mean by racial differences, right? So, you know, the, the music in the South is different than it is from Isan style music, which is kind of more country. Uh, you know, there's just different, you know, you there's different mindsets, different cultural things. Mm -hmm. yeah, they speak a different dialect in the South, even. Right? So, mm -hmm. they speak a different dialect in Isan, and you have Central Base, Bangkok. So, what this could be useful for in Thailand is, especially if there's exchange students or or refugees, mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, you want to show, you want to teach about, res you know, respecting uh, mm -hmm. them and showing it, you know, that's even me as a teacher. Uh, I probably told you the story before, but my first week, my first two weeks of teaching here, uh, my very first time teaching, I saw not one, not two, but three teachers start teaching at a school and leave. And I thought, man, that's no good. That's going to make them think of uh, Western people and they're going to think poorly of us. So I decided, I said, well, I should stay and, and continue teaching to be an ambassador, uh, but also, you know, to, and, and hopefully you can t find some mutual respect for the cultural differences. So anyway, what else, what else did you notice there that you were not sure, sure about? Mm. But mm, for the whole paragraph, I can conclude that the teacher has to provide the knowledge and teach the student to be a good one. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. They have to do the things like um, respecting people and know many things as a citizen that they has they have to do in their country maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again we've talked about this. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but the difficulty and doing that in, in our environment with as many students as there are. But the one that I, I, I enjoyed reading about was they adjust, the accomplished teacher, they adjust their practice based on observation and knowledge of their students' interests, abilities, skills, knowledge, family circumstances, and peer relationships. So... Uh, that's a lot. <laughs> well, I mean, like I said, again, that's hard for us to do in our environment here. So what I do is I try, I don't like to have to pick favorites, but if a student does stand out to me, I will make the extra effort to give them some extra guidance and attention 
and whatever else that I can because if they stick out to me, you know, they're showing some initiative and some interest in the subject. So um, they've earned it, so to speak. Even though I, I want, ideally, I'd be able to get to everyone, but you know, you have to make as a teacher, you have to make a decision. You know, if I can, I can take an interest in these students, you know, hopefully they'll pass they'll pay it forward and help out their friends but I can be more effective by just getting to know these elements of their lives and the one that I thought was very important also was their family circumstances and peer relationships are there anything you is what what if anything do you do or do, do the, does the administration encourage the teachers in the school to understand the students' family circumstances and their peer relationships? Um, like visiting the students' houses? So yeah, visiting the students, I think also maybe... And talking, using live, talk, talking online with the parents mm. and the students as well. Right. Mm. So I, I was thinking more in terms of, um, right, like, for example, if I have the rich student, who's a good student, right, um, I may be, I will adjust to that student because I know their circumstances, their mom picks them up in a Mercedes every day or something like that, right? So I may adjust. I have higher expectations for that student and to do their work because they have more advantages, right? Whereas I have another student who's also very good, but they come from a poor family and they aren't doing their homework as much because they're helping their parents to sell food at their restaurant or something like that. So I will be they're working just as hard, they're just as accomplished, they just can't do the work. They're helping their parents out. So I will, I don't lower my expectations, I temper them for, for that student that's helping their parents because I know their circumstances. They don't have the, they just don't have the time to do my assignments because they're helping to support their family. Whereas the student whose mom picks them up in a Mercedes, she's got all the time in the world so if she doesn't do it she's just being lazy so that's kind of how I would adjust and and there and those students are performing at the same level and I might even have higher expectations from the from the, from the rich students. So why why aren't you performing better because you have all these advantages so that's what I mean but by getting to know their family circumstances and adjusting, does the school does the school encourage you to get to know students on that personal of a level, or maybe you know this, maybe the student has a learning disability, but they're very kind. You know, what, what? Mm -hmm. I have one student. I am just thinking of him. I. I didn't have a chance teaching him, but he is um, one of the, the IP students. He cannot read Thai. Really? Even writing in Thai, even his name, he has to copy from the national ID card. Mm -hmm. And now he is in M5. Wow. Which is rather shock for me. And I guess that his mother is also she i think she also cannot read and write mm -hmm. so that's why her kid is like this but um he this one has a lot of friends his his friends are really good for him help him out for every assignment i don't know how 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 they work it out for him, but he can complete every task, every assignment online. Mm -hmm. At first, I think that this student will be like um, problematic because, because he cannot read and write, right? Mm -hmm. But 
he is the one who complete all the tasks. Mm. Not like the other student who who has no problem with the writing and reading. Mm -hmm. This this one is the case of the responsibility. Yeah. Mm, doing nothing. So does can he read and write in English then or some yes but not that much. Mm -hmm. That is a that is a challenge to say the least. So we should yeah move. for the teachers as well yeah. who teach him. Well, that's what I meant. Mm -hmm. So he he would be very well served to take a tutorial classes uh, with like a kindergarten teacher to to teach yeah. to teach him. Some we time. have a Thai teacher doing that, but he is. He, he is good in terms of responsibility in his own assignment, but for the tutorial class, he is very lazy yeah. to, 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 stu to study the basics, I mean. Yeah, I, I've become lazy with my, with my basic tie, so I, I, I know where you get stuck and then you don't have a... Like when I was learning the alphabet, I would study every day for like two or three hours just practice writing putting things together i need to do that again i'm being lazy but so, mm -hmm. so yeah it, um anyway let's uh let's keep going here so the, all right and then you, the peer relationships you kind of touched upon peer relationships there mm -hmm. so i try to watch out i think i've told one of the things i do um because we can't get to them all, is I tell the boys and the girls, I say, quit grabbing each other's, sorry, I'm gonna be a little crude here, I say, quit grabbing each other's asses. So, in other words, I'm telling them, don't worry about having a boyfriend, don't worry about having a girlfriend, focus on studying right now, this is the best time in your life to do that. And if you've got friends that are dragging you down, that are always causing drama, and you know, you know I say, get rid of them. You have, I, I try to teach them social responsibility by distinguishing who is a good friend to have also because if it's affecting their studying um, or if it's affecting their family life that can, everything is relative to one another so and I especially especially because I have daughters I tell the girls many times don't get a boyfriend stay away from boys <laughs> but that's me so all right well let's keep going then Evaluate how you fully achieve this proposition and whether s your school reflects this in policies and practice. Well, we kind of talked about that for ourselves. Uh, does your, how about it, does your school reflect this uh, accomplished, the propositions of accomplished teaching? And you becoming a, an accomplished teacher? Mm, like I say, See, I think um, I think you want to be the. You say many times, I just want to teach. You're not interested in administration. Administration. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think for you, this is just my personal opinion. That is the your definition of success is accomplished teaching. Like that's where you excel. That's what you enjoy doing. So what do you think does your school in policies and practice does your school reflect these ideas that we've been discussing? Not mm. Okay, that's a Not no. Really. Not really. Okay. All right, then well, yeah. well what do you think? That's fine. That's fine. Look, this isn't going to, I'm mm. I'm recording it for your benefit. I'm not going to go publish this on YouTube yeah, yeah, for okay. the world to see. You don't got to worry. But let's talk about, uh, this is a lot, this is a lot to chew on. And, I, and I'll tell you what, all right, you, you came, when you came to me, when you came to me, you said, I'm having trouble expressing myself to the other teachers, especially the foreigners. Mm -hmm. The stuff I'm reading here, I've never read this before until I got, until I, I pulled it up. But it, it resonates with me like a bell resonate because this is coming this is culturally what I recall 
you know, what we read about. So yeah, this is in fact, these ideas are, are very, I'm, even though I haven't read this, these ideas are very familiar to me, not just for teaching, but you know, in, in the Western culture as a whole. So, but what do you think then about these ideas? Are they, are they good? Are they bad? Do they need a pilot program like we discussed earlier? Like, don't be afraid to give me your opinion. Say, hey, this is a shit idea. Like, it doesn't make sense or, mm. or it won't work. Right? So your school, no, they're not doing it. Is, is it because... Um, they have the policy to, to tackle with um, a situation, but is published or announced very late. But still, there is some policy. But I am happy with the policy of creating Google Classroom. Mm -hmm. And before doing that, we we have a group of teacher creating uh, an online workshop teaching us mm -hmm. to do um, Google Classroom before we have to use it with the student. Mm -hmm. This one, I am ha so happy with it. But in general, um, the the policy is like they they want us to be a good teacher doing that kind of thing and that thing but everything is checked and evaluated by the papers done from the teacher not the 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 real performance i would say mm. can you can you clarify that last statement for me i'm a little um not like understanding you, the school won the lesson plan, individual plan, like um, the things that we have discussed that we, the teacher have, have to have the plan how to develop and improve themselves, right? Mm -hmm. We have that kind of form and self-assessment form as well. But then it does the form and the papers. No one look into the detail in the paper. So, if if i if i uh let's say that i i can write anything on the form right mm -hmm. because no one check i just send it to the school and then that's it so you could you could write that you're the worst teacher in the world your performance yeah, dropped I don't off think they, i don't think they read my document yeah at all they just check <laughs> they just check the the um, how many teachers have handed in the the paper or 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 that form? Right, right. Okay, so it's it's more. There's not. There's not. It's not substantive. Mm. Okay, I understand. I used to write a lot of suggestion. Mm -hmm. um, when I was in boarding two, mm -hmm. I write. I I think I I write a lot of things in detail especially regarding with the director and deputy director but then nothing happened yeah. mm. actually on the last page the i mean the suggestion the 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 page that i write the suggestion is the page that the director have to sign their name yeah i think he 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 ha had to read my feedback yeah things like that but it turned out nothing <laughs> mm. yeah he probably he's probably not even looking when he signs it <laughs> so they just sign their name yeah and the one who check that check the people who handed in the document mm. so no no anonymous suggestions huh mm. okay They're very brave of you all right well Anyway, yeah, I think that's usually par for the course is that the schools reflect them superficially, but in practice, it's really hard to get all of these done. Uh, but as an individual, one of the things I one of the things I did, I tried to maintain is my work ethic when I'm working here, especially while I'm working here in Thailand, because even the customers that you have can be a, too easygoing. 
Um, you're like, okay, I'm going on. They'll say that they're the ones going on holiday, or then if I need to take a day off, like I said, I can take a couple of days off. Everybody's like very easygoing compared to America, so I try to keep my work ethic where I'm holding myself to perform, maintain performance levels, uh, good performance levels. And so we can we might not be able to get all the support we need from the schools, but individually when dealing with students, I think we can do this ourselves and be better teachers mm -hmm. that way. So all right, let's see. Number two, accomplished teachers have a rich understanding of the subjects they teach and appreciate how knowledge in their subjects subject is created organized, linked to other disciplines, and applied to real-world settings, while faithfully representing the collective wisdom of our culture and upholding the values of disciplinary knowledge. Big word again. Which one? Go ahead, show me. Stop, stop the class. Show me which one. Uh, huh? Which, which word? One, right? Which word, yeah. Collective. Um representing the collective wisdom of the culture and upholding the value of disciplinary knowledge. Yeah. So, so <laughs> what's the term? I'm trying to think of the grammar. It's, it's all, yeah. Everything about, we could even make this bigger, actually. I'll show you what I mean. Mm. So, let me this one. Great. So, all of this is actually, it's very big, grammatically correct, big themes in here, and it's all relative. So, and you in particular, we're looking at, so they're using, uh oh, no, 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 that's yours. This is mine. Okay. All right, so accomplished teachers have rich understanding of the subjects they teach. Bam, stop there. And, and appreciate how knowledge in their subjects is, is created, organized, linked to other disciplines, and applied to real-world settings. Okay? So that is the thought there. All right? And then, oh, man, I'm trying to think of the term for these sentence buildings uh, now and then and we use the word he uses the word while so it means like at the same time right so you appreciate this these attributes of your subject here while at the same time faithfully representing the collective wisdom of our culture so you have to transmit this knowledge in a way that upholds the values of your culture is kind of what it's saying the collect the collective wisdom you as an instructor represent the collective wisdom of your culture all right you're like an ambassador Tran transfer the knowledge with its link to my own culture right yeah mm. right um and upholding the values of disciplinary knowledge, right? So disciplinary knowledge just means studying of a subject. That it could be Muay Thai, is a is a martial arts discipline. English uh, grammar. If you're an expert in emer English for Muay Thai, <laughs> sure you could you could become uh, you can make that a course as a discipline. Uh, you know, if you are an expert in English grammar, you've 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 gotten the discipline, the knowledge for that. If you're an expert in English literature, uh, you've studied that discipline. You know about the writing, the classics, the re what to read, things like that. Same, and the same goes for Thai. Uh, we're focused on English here, so. Uh, so. You have, basically, it's saying you have to be. A jack of all trades. You got. You've got to be as an instructor. You've got to be able to do it all. You've got to uh, 
you've got to do all of the everything you see here in the first first sentence have be an expert in what you teach appreciate how knowledge and subject is created organized linked uh, and applied to real world settings and be a can of beans on top of that while faithfully representing the collective wisdom so you have to be a role model for your culture as well not just uh, and, and all right so they also develop the critical and analytical capacities of their students easier said than done <laughs> yeah accomplished teachers command specialized knowledge of how to convey and reveal subject matters to students so this is what I would be seeking uh, I, if I wanted and I do I want to become an accomplished teacher a better teacher I would want this my pers my pursuit of specialized knowledge uh, the whole thing actually how to convey and reveal this is what I would be involved in a learning community like, for like, how to convey the like they think that's very important how to convey knowledge and reveal subject matter to the students that would be my goal as part of a learning community they understand where the difficulties are likely to arise and modify their practice accordingly. Their instructional repertoire allows them to create multiple paths to the subjects they teach, and they are adept at teaching students how to pose and solve their own problems. very ideal <laughs> it's very idealistic yes but we we know mm. we know to be pragmatic in the approach these are mm. right and these are nobody expects perfection because we have a lot to deal with but these are all these are all tools for measuring performance like you can take all of these attributes and say this is what we need to work on as a as an organization as a department as as an institution you know we need you know are we spending too whatever you within the within the realm of what you're doing you know with your department but you you know you can ask you know what you have to work within those limitations you know you can just you know if you're hey, you're spending too much time on on the paperwork or the stuff that that's not like let's we we can get that done it doesn't matter they're not reading it anyway <laughs> so let's let's focus on let's focus on uh, get you know the critical thinking skills of our students and getting them to do these things or, or whatever so that is quite a bit um, yeah, that is quite a bit. So, any questions? Can I ask the other things? Yeah. Have you ever done the in in um, national taste? I mean, in English subject, or net get things like that? Have you? ever done that before i've seen them um i've never taken how did you feel with the test mm, you know to be honest i haven't looked at it comprehensively enough to give you a fair assessment um from the stuff that i did see and i just sort of scanned and skimmed over it um i thought it was very rote learning style um and there were quite a few mistakes in some of them and gotcha questions which were i thought were unfair like mm -hmm. it's not it they were in places that you know it's not really testing their the students ability so much as their ability to catch a mistake like 
there's not a period at the end of this sentence. Like they got everything right, but they, you know, maybe they were in a hurry or whatever, but they, they missed that period at, at the end of the sentence. So it, it's, you know, not, not as beneficial. But that's how I felt about it. What about what about you? What did you feel about those tests? I'll I'll look, I'll have to look at them more comprehensively and give you a better, <laughs> better response. Get and own it. I, I for me, I think it is quite okay for M six student. Mm -hmm. But another test, another English test. I don't know what to say, but it is a part of nine subjects, like math, um, social study, and they include English as well. For this one, um, in English test, mm -hmm. there are a lot of long reading passages, mm -hmm. which for me as a teacher, I don't think I can manage my time and do the whole um, and answer the whole questions. I mean, for the for that test paper, I think it is too difficult for the student as, as well but so so i would like you to try just browsing to to it and 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 telling me your your feeling uh even you are a native speaker yourself mm -hmm. do you find it hard to complete that test within time or not no <laughs> I had, but I'm a native speaker, so I do have an advantage. Plus, like you know, despite my my lack of uh, certifications, I'm not bragging, but when I was about 13 years old, uh, I took a test for a, sta uh, a standardized test for getting into special school programs for uh, different for for accelerated learning so and i scored very high with my english i think i was 13 mm. years old and i was reading writing and everything else at a uh, first year university student so i was i was gifted in that area uh mm. from a young age so it's easy it's easy for me it's easy for me so i'm not really I'm not really a good, I, I would say I'm not a good person to ask to judge that because, because I am better than average, or at least I was when I was younger, better than average at mm. that sort of thing. Um, but I think, um, I think with those kinds of tests, as far as language learning, I think that also is more about your it, it's not testing your ability to, with the language so much as it is your ability to dissect a piece of information and and get like because they'll ask you a follow-up question like how many how many pieces of bubble gum did Jerry buy and then you just have to scan through okay uh, he he bought five. He wanted to buy. He wanted to buy six, but there were only five left. He bought five. And that, so it's not really testing your ability at comprehension, or it's testing your ability to locate information more. So that's what I. That's what I think in general about tests like that. That whether it's for you, OMET or you know tests I take in my own country. So. so. I'll send it to you later. Yeah, send it to so me. So you can have a look. I'll take a look at it. I'll tell you what I think. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You can send it in the email. But anyway, it's uh, 6 o'clock and 6.10, and my wife is calling. I got to go. I'll see you next time, okay? See you. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye.